All right, so today I'm going to show you how to restore your bricked Linksys WRT router. Now, how do you know if your router's bricked? Well, in the case of this 3200, you'll power it on, it'll light up, and it won't go in. Basically, it'll go as far as you'll have your lights light up, and then it will not do anything else. You cannot, it will not give out DHCP IP addresses to any computers, and you cannot access the web GUI. This is as far as they'll get right here. Now this router was running the DDWRT firmware and one day it just decided it was not gonna boot. Now you can also have this from having a bad flash or any other reason. But as long as, you, as, long as the router is lighting up and you have the flashing power light at the beginning, there is something you can do to restore it. So, you're going to, so you're going to need a few things. The first thing is going to be a USB to TTL serial cable. I have one right here. Now if you now you need one of these to restore your router. If you do not, there's nothing you can do. Thankfully, these are very cheap on Amazon. They're about eight dollars, and I'll leave a link in the video description. You're also going to need a Phillips head screwdriver because we're going to be opening up the router. An Ethernet cable to plug your router directly into your computer. You cannot restore this over Wi-Fi. And you're also going to need a couple pieces of software. You'll need PuTTY so we can access the terminal on the router. And TFTPD so we can host an FTP server with our firmware on it that we want to flash. And the last thing you'll also need is either the stock Linksys firmware or any custom firmware, DDWRT, OpenWRT, that you want to put on the router. Alright, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to take, is we are going to open up the front of the router. And to do this, go ahead, flip your router over to the back, just unfold these antennas so it lays flat. You'll take your Phillips head screwdriver, and there's two Phillips head screws in the front. Now, you only need to take the front off for the, I believe, the 1200 and the 3200. If you have a 1900, you'll also need to remove the screws in the back to take off this back plastic piece. There's two, and once you take the screws out, these feet just pop right out. Set those off to the side. And then what you want to do is just, I use the feet of the router to support this. And just gently pull forward and then the front of the router will pop off. That was not gentle. Just be ever so, just be careful as you can so you don't damage anything on the board there. But, all right, so we're gonna flip the router back over to the top and then what we are looking for is this serial port right here. So what we're looking for is a white connector on the right side of the board with the 1200 and 3200 it'll be close to the front right here where you have access to it. On the 1900 is behind the black plastic piece and that's why this also needs to come off. But this port has six pins on it. We only need three of those six. You're gonna need to grab your TTL to USB cable. Now there are four wires on the cable here. You have a black, a white, a green, and a red. This red wire, do not plug into your router. This provides five volts of power and will most likely destroy your router. All right, so the black is gonna go on the first pin to the far left. The white is gonna go on the pin directly next to the black. And then the green, the green wire, we're going to we're going to skip the third pin and go straight to the and go on the fourth. All right. That's a little hard to see, but that's what it should look right right there. We have black, white, skip a pin, then green. We don't need to plug anything to those other three cables. All right, 
And then right now that's all we need to do with the router. And the rest of the setup we're going to do on our computer. All right, so the first thing you want to do is on your router, you want to make sure you have your TTL cable plugged into the router and your computer, an ethernet cable going from your the port one on the router to your desktop and plugged into power. Now we're not going to turn it on right now. First, so first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have PuTTY, TFTPD, and the firmware that you want to load onto your router already on your computer. So because you are most likely going to be losing internet connection, assuming the, the network adapter on your computer is how you're accessing internet right now. We're going to go into to our network adapter properties. And go into the network adapter that we're going to be using here. Properties, Internet Protocol version 4, properties for that. And we are going to be using the following IP address. 192.168.1.2. Whoops, messed that up there. Then subnet mask, we'll leave that as the default 255.255.255.0. And then for the default gateway, we're going to do 192.168.1.1. Whoops, messed that up again. And you can just click OK there. And then just minimize that. We'll need to come back to that later. Alright, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go make a folder in our C drive just for easy access here. I'm going to name NIME FTP. And then we are going to move our firmware that we are going to flash into this folder. And now I'm just going to rename mine to Linksys just so it will be easier to specify the name when we go to flash the router. And then after you do that, go ahead and open up TFTPD. Then we're going to go in and choose the network adapter that we just assigned to 192.168.1.2. And then we are going to choose that FTP directory that we just made. All right, now that you did that, just set that off to the side. All right, so after we do that, we're going to go ahead and open up PuTTY. What we need to do to connect to the to our Linksys router, I already have a preset made here, but it but just so you know what settings you need to put in, we're going to switch over to serial. And the speed needs to be 1152.00 baud. And now we need to figure out what what uh, com what com port that our TTL to USB cable is using. To do that, just go ahead and open up device manager on your computer. Scroll down to where you see ports, com and LPT and look for look for anything Depending on your adapter, it might be different. Mine's the prolific USB to serial COM port and is on COM6. So we'll just change that to COM6. All right, now you do that. Now that you have that, these three settings all set here, go ahead, click open. It's going to open up a terminal window. And now we are ready to turn on the router. So let's move over to a router here. And once you see, once we powered it on, if we done if we have everything connected correctly, the terminal will come up, and right here where it says hit any key to auto boot, just press space, and then you'll get a prompt that says Marvell. Once again, if you done that, you'll know if you've done this right, you'll have the power light. The power light will stay blinking, and we also have activity from our port one on the Ethernet port because it is connected to our desktop. But all right. So the first command that we are going to type in to the, into the serial console is going to be set env. And then IP ADDR for IP address. And when we are sending the IP address of the modem, I mean, not the modem, we're sending the IP address of the router. And that's going to be 192.168.1.1. Next we're going to type is set env server IP. And then that is going to be the IP we set for our network adapter. And that's 192.168.1.2. All right. Next we're going to type set env. And then we're going to type firmware name. Now if you remember, 
uh, I renamed our firmware to Linksys. And then you're also going to add .img to the end of that. Yeah. Don't know what don't know what I typed in wrong there. Oh, I typed in set evn, not set env. That was my bad there. All right. Now, once you have that all typed in, we're going to type in run update underscore both underscore whoops images. And what this is going to do is it's going to flash both of the uh, firmware partitions on the router, assuming that they are both corrupted, and that's why we can no longer boot to it. So then hit enter, and it's going to start loading those files. And if you see right here, up in the FTP program, that it is sending those files over right now. And it is current. And you can see right here, this is just it writing to the NAND. And you also can see that the uh, activity lay on the router is blinking. All right, it's erasing NAND. Now it's writing it. And first NAND write was okay. Waiting for the second one to finish here. And that came back okay too. All right, now that that is done, we can open up your uh, network connection settings again. Go back into the properties for your network adapter. Go back once again to the IPv Internet Protocol version 4 properties, and we're just going to switch it back to an IP address automatically and the tame DNS server automatically. All right, close that. And then that, and then doing that, it just crashed your FTP server. Close out that before you close, before you do it. Although it doesn't hurt anything. All right. And then you can either turn the router on or off again, or in the Marvel prompt, you can just type in reset and it will now reset the router. And you can see it is now booting the firmware. And you'll know. And you'll know it will be successful here in just one second, right, right there where it said Linksys. So you know it is booting our stock Linksys firmware. All right, sorry about that. I had a little bit of a issue with uh, my network adapter there, but our flash was successful. We're now booted up in stock Linksys firmware. And now if you boot it up and you see it's asking for a password that you don't have to give it, just go ahead and uh, take, a, take a pin or a screwdriver, hold the reset button in the back of the router for 30 seconds, and it will factory reset the router, and then you can run the setup again and have a working router. Well, I hope this uh, tutorial has helped you. The reason I made this was because the tutorials that did exist wasn't really clear enough, in my opinion, or that easy to follow. I don't know if I was any better. I was probably worse. If not, let me know down in the comments section. All right, well, that is going to be it. Enjoy your working router, and thanks for watching.